Yeah, in the jungle, a fight for all island schoolboy football knockout supremacy. Two former champions trying to announce legacies. Two newcomers attempting to disrupt the Champions Cup status quo. And so we begin with the 2021-2022 winners Clarendon College against first-time semi-finalist Heidel High. The Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex is where we are for this semi-final contest. Massive moment for these two. Welcome to live coverage on Sportsmax 2 UEFA Champions League live on Sportsmax. Here they come. Clarendon College, an identity defined, steeped in history, plastered on the present, a most attractive force, quality. Alongside them, Heidel. This is only the beginning of what they hope will be a dynastic journey. Fill your cups. Ready up. We're that much closer to drama. Semi-final one in the 2023 ISA Champions Cup. Ricardo Chambers and Lejay Williams for your listening pleasure. Clarendon College, High Dell for your viewing delight. Yeah, this is a huge game. High Dell, their first time here. Clarendon looking to win their second Champions Cup title. They'll have to get to the final first. And this High Dell team have been knocking down barriers this season already into the Manning Cup final. Their first time there in over 10 seasons. They're looking to create a first in this Champions Cup. But Clarendon College have been mighty impressive this season. Can anyone knock off what they are trying to achieve, which is this Triple Crown, the Da Costa Cup, the Champions Cup, and the Olivia Shield in one season? That's what they want. Can they achieve it? They'll have to cross this hurdle first. They go through the official aspect of proceedings. A meet and greet with the dignitaries, including sponsors and officials from the Inter-Secondary School Sports Association, ISA. The teams will greet each other. And this is probably as friendly as they will be for the next 90 plus minutes. At the end of it all, one of these teams will taste defeat. Carterell will lead the officials. He'll be the man in the middle, Jermaine Yi Singh as the first assistant. Andre Smith as the second assistant. Romario Francis, the fourth official. Let's have a look at the starting lineups then. And we begin with Clarendon College. Roche Borel as usual in goal. A back four. Fullbacks Daniel Clark and Atiba Green. Nashon Bolt Barrett has been brilliant at centre back this season alongside Devonte Hodges. Malachi Douglas, the captain, has DeAndre Gallimore and Tian QP in midfield with a fabulous front three of Christopher Hull, Kahim Dixon, and Jamil Ashley. They are coached by Linworth Teacher Hyde. Yeah, typical 4 3 3 for Clarendon College. Kaim Dixon up top, 41 goal contributions. He'll be looking to add to that today. Heidel boys, no doubt, ready for this semi-final as well. Tajari Lee, the former Kingston College man, starts in goal once again for them. Seems as if they'll go with a back five today. Joe McGordon, Michael Forbes, Joseph Brightley, Gabriel Seaborn and Darren Campbell, Kylan Smith, the captain, Ronaldo Barrett and Dante Stewart in the middle with Amaria Henry and Dante Brooks up front. They are coached by Devon Anderson. Yeah, world of talent in this Heidel unit. 
Ronaldo Barrett, of course, Omario Henry. This team is very lethal when the time is right. The two captains, Ronaldo Barrett and Malachi Douglas, had their say with the officials. The officials go through their final bit of preparation before the start of this one. It's the Champions Cup semi-final one. Later on, Glenmuir versus Kingston College, another cracking encounter. There are those who believe that the Da Costa Cup final already set will become the Champions Cup final as well. There is Kahim Dixon, 25 goals this season, plus a love affair with the Champions Cup. Can he come to the party for Clarendon College once again? The boy from Trenchtown, so close to home in the colors of CC. We don't have a capacity crowd by any stretch of the imagination, but it is expected to grow throughout the course of the afternoon. It is decent support, and we do have a light drizzle at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex at the moment ahead of kickoff. Field looks good enough to withstand whatever rain we have this afternoon. Clarendon College versus Heidel. Champions Cup semi final one. Carl Terrell getting ready to send this contest underway. Two teams still in with a shot of winning the Triple Crown. Clarendon College already in the Da Costa Cup final. Heidel already in the Manning Cup final. But at the end of this one, only one will still have a chance of winning the coveted three. The domestic title, the All-Island Knockout, for which they play today. And of course, the Olivia Shield between the winners of the Manning and Da Costa Cup competitions. The action has already started pretty fierce. Bolt Barrett, of course, not shy of making challenges, already putting one in on his the striker that he'll be facing most today, Omario Henry. Throwing goes to Clarendon College, however. Intelligent and decisive player is Nashon Bolt Barrett has had a tremendous season at centre back for this Clarendon College team. And they are looking for another big game from him this afternoon. Douglas. Clarendon College in possession. Jamel Ashley gets possession of the football. Gallimore back into defense for Barrett. Douglas makes himself available and then turns it further right side. Daniel Clark for Ashley. Clarendon College doing what they do best, which is to possess the football. Here's Jamil Ashley again. Tion QP. Back to Paul Barrett in defense. 
employing all the patience in the world. Then the long diagonal over to Ashley. Thought for a second that he had done brilliantly to keep it in play, but it goes into touch. Yeah, Heidel will have to do a lot of work, especially those wide midfielders. It's, at first, we thought that they were going to line up with three defenders or five. It is a similar system to what we saw against Kingston College in the Manning Cup semi-finals. That 4-1-2-1-2 four, one, two, one, two diamond shape. Only thing that their skipper, Ronaldo Bard, seems to be playing at the tip of it instead of at the base. Trying to get the ball out of their area. Heidel. They will be pressed like they have not been for the duration of this campaign. Here is Christopher Hall. Decides to go for a left-footed shot that's high over the top. Making his intentions clear. This experience at number eight for Clarendon College. He is certainly not shy of shooting from anywhere. Knows he has a skill to execute. 12 goals and 12 assists this season. He has really let, let his experience show so far. So many talismatic players on this Clarendon College team. And they will do really well to get the better of them. There's Lenworth Hyde. Has brought tremendous success to this Clarendon College community. They have been in four of the last five the Costa Cup finals. Devon Anderson, what an occasion for him. It's almost as if he's come full circle to Jay Williams. He was at Holy Trinity in 2014 when they upset Clarendon College in the first round of the Super Cup as it was then. They went all the way to penalties at Sabina Park. And the Holy Trinity won that encounter and went on to the final where they lost 2-0 to a marauding Jamaica College set up filled with talent and quality and class yeah and i think he has improved as a manager devon anderson a lot of nuances to his system this season that we weren't seen before so in addition to already being a really good coach he has further improved and with this talented heidel squad we see a lot of evidence of it Clarendon College continuing to possess the football. Ball back to Hodges in defense. Daniel Clark, the left fullback, dribbles forward, has a few options, decides to go back to Tion QP. Hodges up to assist, plays the diagonal, asking Ashley to run onto it, but it's well marshaled behind by Joseph Brightly. And a goal kick coming up by Michael Forbes. And a goal kick coming up for Heidel. Yeah, a lot has been said about Ronaldo Barrett in the midfield and Amario Henry up top. But I think Michael Forbes has been nothing short of spectacular for Heidel playing in a myriad of positions. I saw a game with him earlier this season where he played in both, in all three positions, attack, defense, and in the midfield. So he's extremely versatile, excellent on the ball. And I think he adds a lot to this Heidel unit. Almost six minutes in, and I think we're starting to see the pattern of how this one is likely to play out. Heidel in possession, let's see how long they can maintain it for. Not very. Clarendon College again. They don't mind being patient, this Clarendon College team. Here's QP. Clark. Ashley. Strings a lovely ball forward. And Kahim Dixon with the run. Just couldn't get the right boot onto that as Tajari Lee read it well, the 19-year-old. And make that a warning for this Heidel backline. The yeah, excellent movement from Dixon getting in behind Michael Forbes. And it was good work by Tajari Lee. It had to be done coming up off of his line. 
part of what makes Kahim Dixon so good as a forward. His movement off the ball is exemplary. He gets into those in the pockets. And he always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Ashley for QP. Here is Hall. Seems as if he's brought his shooting boots this afternoon, but he hasn't hit the target yet after a couple of shots. Paul Barrett battling for it over on the far side and gives up a free kick to Darren Campbell. Hydell will have an opportunity to go further forward. Yeah, but they've taken it quickly. Although we are seeing Clarendon with the ball a lot. Hydell are a team that like to possess the ball well, as we saw multiple examples of against Kingston College on Saturday. The captain Barrett for Smith. And here's an opportunity for Amaria Henry, but he couldn't get a shot away. Good challenge coming in. And the clearance coming pretty quickly. Seaborn battling for it. But he loses that battle against Ashley. Now comes to DeAndre Gallimore. Heidel back in possession with the captain Barrett. Hall for Douglas. Clarendon College with possession of the football. Here is Theon QP. They say he does the dirty work and it doesn't look as if there's a lot of dirty work done in this Clarendon College team. They're clean as a whistle. Gallimore. Goes for the lift for Ashley. Daniel Clark is up in support. Ashley decided against going to him. But does well enough to win a free kick. Yeah, as I mentioned, because of the narrow formation that Heidel are playing, I think it's going to leave their fullbacks isolated 2v1 at several on several occasions. And we're already seeing the evidence of that. Seaborn having his hands full. And I assume it will be the same for Darren Campbell on the other side. Free kick coming up to Jari Lee. Tries to have a close look. This one comes curling in. Goes up the crossbar. That was a terrific effort. Yeah, I had a feeling he was going to go straight for goal, you know. Good one in by Gallimore. And I think the touch might have been essential from Tajari Lee. He might have a lot more of that to defend Tajari Lee. As the first corner kick of the contest is coming up for Clarendon College. They have numbers inside the box, CC. Corner kick whipped in and headed away. And they cleared further away. Idell trying to make a break with Amaria Henry. Oh, that's a lot. The ball played over on the far side, and Rashid Burrell had to be alert to get the clearance in. And now Hall for Clarendon College. What are his options? Digs this one inside the box. Was asking Nashawn Bolpard to make the run. And the Clarendon College center back couldn't get there before to Jean Rilly. Yeah, both goalkeepers have had to be very aware and quick off their line so far in this one. Not the best of touch touches there by Seaborn. Hasn't scored this season, Paul Parrott, so was a little surprised to see him in that position. Atiba Green for Clarendon College. Barrett will be so critical for this Heidel team. Henry couldn't take that one down. Right, 
Okay, moving from end to end now. Here's Clark. Seaborn cleaned up for Heidel. Gordon decides to go long. Paul Pirat was trying to watch it into the arms of goalkeeper Burrell. And that could have ended up messy for Clarendon College. Thankfully, it didn't for them. Yeah, it was good, persistent work by Brooks. Oh, here's a lovely ball played in and a super save. What a chance for Heidel to go in front. Burrell equal to the task. And it's Barrett again with a lovely ball over the top. And I believe it was Dante Stewart. Yeah, on the swivel. And that's why it's important for your goalkeeper to be very active off of his line. Made himself extremely big. Not much to aim for, but that's still a fantastic reflex save by the Clarendon College custodian. Clarendon College trying to compose themselves after that one. Here's Daniel Clark in position now. Hull has switched flanks. He's now over on the left. Kajim Dixon attacking on the right. His cross not cleared initially by Seaborn, but they do well to get it away. Hodges does brilliantly to win possession initially, but then inadvertently poking the ball out for a throw. Yeah, Hodges, another part of that really good back partnership for Clarendon College. I think him and Boat Barrett dovetail each other perfectly. The one who stays back a bit more composed, doesn't like to come out and tackle, although we saw it there from Devante Hodges. And that goes against Bolt Barrett, who's a very active defender. Devante Hodges has scored three goals this season for Clarendon College, none more important than the one he netted at St. Elizabeth Technical. In the round of 16, there's a shot fired over the top. Approaching 15 minutes in, still no goals in this semi-final encounter between Clarendon College and Heidel from the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. Yeah, but another through pass from Ronaldo Barrett. He really is effective from all over the midfield. Mary Henry unable to put that one on target. Brightly committing that infringement. Expected Brightly to be a part of a back three today. Actually, he's staying right in front of the defense. He's the deepest line midfielder. Dixon for Hall, trying to play a quick one-two. Heidel escape with possession of the football. Seaborn was looking for Dante Stewart. Daniel Clark took control for CC. Malachi Douglas, the captain, scored their lone goal in regular time in the Dacosta Cup semi final against Garver Maceo. Tough match that was at the weekend. Here's Douglas. Too much weight for Ashley. Yeah, a bit static in attack there from Clarendon College. That's not something that we hear very often. First semi-final in the ISA Champions Cup for 2023. We're live from the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex in Kingston. Heidel in the Champions Cup semi-finals for...
the first time in their history. Clarendon College making a return. Last year, they faced Kingston College at this stage of the competition, and it turned out to be the Dijon Whisper Richards show. This time around, Clarendon College will want it to be all about them. Having said that, Kahim Dixon did score a peach of a goal in that semi-final. A bicycle kick consolation goal that would make even Garnacho proud. Maybe Garnacho was inspired by that strike. That one got away from Dixon. Hull battles for it and wins it for Clarendon College. There's a cross coming in. Catamore off the crossbar. Hull with a chance to shoot. Dixon shoots. Dixon scores. Clarendon College in front. Kahim Dixon loves the Champions Cup and the Champions Cup loves him. That's his 26th of the season and CC are in control. It broke to him and they wouldn't have wanted it to break to anyone else but Kahim Dixon. It was a good chance initially for Gallimore, hit the bar and Heidel failed to clear their lines. And in what is somewhat of a homecoming for Kahim Dixon, he has marked it with a very important goal. And on this gloomy, gloomy day, he has taken a leaf out of the book from the Temptations because he has found sunshine and has given Clarendon College a 1 0 lead in this Champions Cup semi final. Tajarali, no doubt, disappointed in the Heidel goal. But this is a moment for Clarendon College's number 13, Kahim Dixon. In his seventh Champions Cup match, he has just scored his fifth goal. He has one assist as well. And that is if you are not counting the penalty that he won to get them the first round victory in their title winning season of 2021-2022. Or the FPL type assist that he would have had against St. George's College in the quarterfinal last week. But what a story, Champions Cup career he's had. An important part of the Clarendon College team that won in 2021-2022 as a 16-year-old, scored in both the semi-final and the final, and was the tournament MVP. And two seasons on, he is still causing havoc for opposing backlines. That was an opportunity he would have expected to take. Yeah, and I'm sure he would have wanted to take that one. It was an excellent, excellent pass through. And once he got his head on it, he should have and probably should have scored. 26 goals this season for Kahim Dixon. He has now netted two in the Champions Cup, 24 in the Da Costa Cup. Heidel in possession. They must now find a way to come from behind in this one. Ronaldo Barrett there looking for options, couldn't find any. Having to drop a bit deeper to impact the game. The Heidel captain. Yeah, here he is again getting the pass from Forbes. The options limited and the ball is stolen by Hall. And a yellow card coming out, the first one of the encounter. Yeah, Darren Campbell over on that side. I said that they would have their hands full from wing areas. Heidel, a lot of work for them to do. And they did that work really well against Kingston College in the Manning Cup semi-final. But I think in this one, 
They'll have to do even more. Download the Sportsmanx app today from the Google Play or the App Store and to catch the closing stages of the school world football season from Jamaica. This is it's the Champions Cup semi-final action today as Daniel Clark dribbles forward and the picks out Jamil Ashley. Ashley with the cross. It's not handled well. Dixon with the right-footed effort and got a block in and a corner kick will be coming up for Kyrman College as they continue to put the pressure on this Heidel team and it was Michael Forbes who got the pivotal block in to take that one away from the target. Yeah, Heidel causing a lot of their own problems so far, especially defensively, failing to clear their lines. That's what's led to the goal. And we saw there again. Here's a corner kick. The shot from Ashley is cleared off the line. That was really close to being 2 0 to Clarendon College. Oh, the ball is given away here to Dante Brooks. Lifting it forward, looking for Henry. And the Clarendon College back line does the business. Hygel have had one fabulous chance. It came to Dante Stewart. Came face to face with Rashid Burrell in the Clarendon College goal. Burrell coming up with a fabulous save to deny the Heidel number 22. And Clarendon College have created a number of opportunities since they scored and would be disappointed not to have taken any of them. Yeah, I'm sure Heidel are ruining the fact that they missed out on that golden chance to take the lead. Clark for Ashley. Kyron College in possession. Tion QP. Malachi Douglas, the captain. Hall. Douglas thinks about a shot. Picked out Tejari Lee with brilliant accuracy. Yeah, straight to the goalkeeper that effort. But Clarendon showing that they aren't shy about shooting from range. Henry does well for Heidel. The option seems so limited whenever they have the football, Heidel. And invariably, Clarendon College regain possession. Here is Daniel Clark. Hodges, Atiba Green, Christopher Hall, Douglas, here's another shot, Daniel Clark with a left-footed effort, and Tajari Lee comes up with the save once again. Clarendon really turning up the pressure at this point. Heidel, I think, have to do a job now of really just stabilizing the game for themselves. The Clarendon College players have been given so much time on the football. And Heidel fortunate that CC are not further ahead in this one.
20th minute of this Champions Cup semi-final. And at the moment, it seems all Clarendon College. It has started to rain quite heavily at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. Here is Devontae Hodges. For Daniel Clark, who just tested to Shara Lee with his left foot. Shamil Ashley, oh, with a cross inside, but not close enough to the arriving Kahim Dixon. Who has made the difference so far? Heidel do have quality on the bench. Deshaun Henry, their leading scorer this campaign, didn't start today, neither did Keani Jackson. And so you'd like to think that at some point the coach will go to them as Forbes ventures forward for Heidel. Maybe a stroke of luck his way. Here is Smith now, and the flag up offside, 29th minute of this encounter. Yeah, and that's just a small piece of the skill set of Michael Forbes. Long busting run from center back. Unfortunate for him, he lost his footing. Tallest player on the field? Yeah, I think by some, some margin, maybe even taller than you, Ricardo. Not a maybe. He definitely is. Dixon for Clarendon College. Hodges. Heidel's throw as we're about to hit half an hour in this one. Forbes, but it's given away to Hall. I was looking for Dixon. Paul Barrett, what a player he is. Has slotted into this Clarendon College backline with ease. Yeah, oftentimes when we see national representatives playing at this level, the class is evident and it's no different with Nashan Bolt Barrett. Top, top quality at centre back. You don't need a long look to realise how good he is. Was well won by Gabriel Seaborn. Amaria Henry. It's Clarendon College's ball. And QP goes long, was looking for Kahim Dixon. Comes right back the other way. Ronaldo Barrett with a left footed drive. Well wide of the mark. Yeah, not one of his best efforts, and he knows that he could have and should have done better on that occasion player of his talents also a national under 17 representative Ronaldo Barrett his first year of schoolboy football is a part or is a part of the Cavalier Academy So easy for them when they're in possession of the football, Clarendon College. Douglas for Hull. Ashley. 
Goes out wide to Daniel Clark. Gets it inside along the ground. And Gatley Moore gets the call against him. And that battle with Dante Stewart. He's had to drop deep so often, so far today, Ronaldo Bart. Yeah, because of the good press and shape of Clarendon College. Excellent pass, though. Picked out Seaborn with a plum. Hydell will maintain possession through Dante Stewart. Here's the captain, Bart again. Has such wonderful vision. The Heidel number eight. Yeah, and the type of passes to go along with said vision. Really talented player on and off the ball. I've been very vocal actually in saying that he's one of the best players in schoolboy football. I do think in actuality he's the best player in urban area schoolboy football. But the Dacosta Cup players have something to say about him having the overall title. Fifth minute of this semi final. Clarendon College still with the advantage, and they have possession of the football. Ashley has gone over onto the right side of the park, comes face to face with Theron Campbell. Still possession, CC. Christopher Hall for Daniel Clark. Malachi Douglas cuts inside, has it on the right foot. Douglas gets a good curler in, and Kahim Dixon missed it again. Could have easily been three already for the Clarendon College number 13. Yeah, inches away for him, but Clarendon still pressing on. Dixon again, can't get the header on target. Kahim Dixon trying to lead Clarendon College to their second Champions Cup title in three seasons. He was integral in them winning their first, scoring and assisting in the semi final, scoring the lone goal in the final against Dintel Technical. Well, they sure do enjoy their football in this part of the land. They have come from far to witness today's semi-final. And what we have seen already is one goal. Christopher Hull laying it off to Kahim Dixon. Dixon picking his spot and hitting it beautifully after DeAndre Gallimore had a glorious chance to make it 1-0. Dixon took the opportunity when it fell for him. His fifth Champions Cup goal in three seasons. His 26th goal of this campaign, second in the Champions Cup this tournament. And the Clarendon College 1-0 up as they approach the halftime break. And it is a deserved lead as well. They have created a bulk of the chances, have had a bulk of the possession, and all in all have been the better team so far. But Heidel have had their chances as well. Good chances also, but since the goal, I think I've really struggled to get a foothold in the game.
Hytel. Seaporn. Bart couldn't get that one under control. And like we've seen so often in this contest, the football is back with Clarendon College. And they can find teammates with consummate ease. Sometimes it seems like an exhibition. Here's Daniel Clark. Oh, spreads this one forward for Christopher Hall. Hall gets inside the box. And Michael Forbes in the way again. And it goes behind for a corner kick, but a pivotal intervention from the pick number five for Hytel. Although I think Christopher Hall will be slightly disappointed that he didn't produce a better delivery. Yeah, I think he should have taken a bit more time to pick out a pass here. Christopher Hall had all the time in the world, really. But yeah, it's a very important interception from Forbes. Really good skill he has. Ball hawk. Corner kick whipped in. Dixon went for the bicycle kick again. Apparently that's the one is successful at the National Stadium. Missed that one completely. Here is Dante Stewart for Heidel. Came under pressure and lost possession of the football. Hodges. Clarendon College player down. Looks like the captain Douglas. Play goes on. Douglas in trouble here. Holding on to the right knee. And Heidel of possession of the football with their captain Barrett. Now Clarendon College win possession. Let's see what happens. Play continues. Dante Stewart intercepted in midfield. Barrett spreads it left side for Smith and Heidel on their way. Bolt Barrett with defending to do and does it brilliantly, denying Omaria Henry getting a cross in. Yeah, it's not many center backs in the competition that can keep up with Henry for pace. Bolt Barrett did excellent to recover there, only conceding a corner. And this might be a really big chance. Their first corner of the game, Heidel. This might be a really big chance for them to get back into the game. Especially with Michael Forbes launching himself forward. Amaria Henry whips it in the corner, kick high. Too much pace on it, but his captain does well to read it. Forbes now in possession for Heidel. Bolt Barrett having him under constant pressure. And Ronaldo Barrett was in space, hoping that the ball would have come to him. It didn't. But they do have a throw, Heidel. Gabriel Seaborn, the 18 year old. Fires that throw in. Stewart takes it down well. Odds are always against him in that situation. Heidel maintaining a nice little period of possession here. Darren Campbell for Smith. Look at how much pressure is put on the Heidel players when they get possession of the football. But they do well to get this one to Barrett. Barrett does brilliantly to stay on his feet. Oh, 360. And gets going, gets taken down and wins a free kick. That's brilliant work from the Heidel captain. And that's just a small glimpse of his talents found himself in a sticky sticky situation there Ronaldo Barrett did really well to evade all of that pressure and then win his team a foul not many players at this level could have gotten out of this situation and rightly so Malachi Douglas was saying no but that looks like a free kick to me and it will be Mario Henry to strike this one scored a lovely lovely goal in the Manning Cup semi-final Started his high school career at Calabar. Amaria Henry transferred to Heidel in 2021. 
now looking to take them to glory fires this one into the wall does well to get close to the follow-up but the clearance comes all the way out to Joma Gordon nice period here for Heidel in the closing stages of the first half Paul Parrott also always so calm and composed at the back reads the game really well Callimore battling for it. Oh, does well to win it. Hall trying to get the ball from Seaborn. Does well enough to win a throw. 44th minute of this semi final. It hasn't been electric, but it's been watchable. Daniel Clark does well. The cross was not a great one, though. And now Ronaldo Barrett for Heidel trying to play the quick ball forward and ball Barrett in the way again. Atiwa Green for Clarendon College. QP Douglas the captain Hutchis will try his luck that was a defender's throw yeah he's never shy about taking shots from distance he's his father's son after all Devante Hodges three goals on the season and they tend to be extremely important that one would have been as well. Clarendon College in many ways will be disappointed that they are not at least 2 0 up heading into the halftime break. Heidel will feel that although they have been outplayed in this first half, for the score to only be 1 0, they are very much still in it. 45th minute, and we look to the fourth official to see how much time will be added on at the end of the first half. Paul wins it in midfield. Can't keep it in play though. Two minutes to be added at the end of the first. Gabriel Seapoint with the throw. And then slam that one into Christopher Hall, who again has switched to flanks and is now operating on the left. Which means Ashley will be on the right. There he is, part of the winning team in 2021, 2022 as well. Christopher Hull scored in the semi-final. Hodges sends it long. Atiba Green picks it up. Well, it was more wide. Dixon, nifty little player. Has better passes in him than that, though. Holding his head there, Kaim Dixon. I'm not quite sure what happened. But of course, the play has to be stopped for a head injury. <laughs> a bit dramatic I think that one from Kaim Dixon but he is a showman on his way to Hollywood if ever football doesn't work out Ken Heidel pull one back before the break they only have seconds to do so or Clarendon College will take this 1-0 advantage going to half-time. Mario Henry winces on his way up. Here's Michael Forbes. Might try his luck, you know, Michael Forbes. And needed a lot of it 
to test Rashid Burrell from that distance. Carterell has seen enough of this first half. That man, not for the first time in his Champions Cup career, is the difference. His goal has Clarendon College in front. Michael Forbes had a pretty good first half, but it wasn't enough. Heidel, while disappointed that they are behind, will still have belief that they can turn this around once it remains at just one. That man, the teacher, knows it's far from over. They too know they are still in a battle, but at half time, they are in the ascendancy by a goal to nil. Europa League action live on Sportsmax 2 this Thursday. West Ham away to Bakatapola. 12.45 p.m., 1.45 ECT. And on Sportsmax, Sparta Prague will play Real Betis. That's also at 12.45, 1.45 ECT. Liverpool play last. That's at 3 p.m., 4 ECT. And Liverpool just a point away from securing their spot in the next round of the competition. Marseille versus Ajax. And that's on Sportsmax 2 at 3 p.m. for ECT. Safe to say, Europa League lives on your home of champions. Astana versus Dinamo Zagreb in the Conference League on Sportsmax 2 on Thursday at 3 p.m. for ECT. And Besiktas against Club Bruges. Back at the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex as we get ready for second half action in this ISA Champions Cup semi final. The first semi final on the day. Kingston College and Glenmuir to come in semi final two. Clarendon College leading this one by a goal to nil. And Heidel getting ready to make. Two changes at the start of the second half. Told you that they hadn't started Deshaun Henry, their leading goal scorer, Keanu Jackson, didn't start either. And as they need to find a goal, at least in this contest. Smith. Just couldn't get the shot away, Heidel. Seaborn for the captain. Jackson lost out. But I tell looking for some impetus from their number 10. Yet yeah, Keanu Jackson replacing Dante Stewart. Jackson getting a goal in that encounter. Clarendon College maintaining pressure though. That shot high over the top. From Jamil Ashley.
here's Jackson again. A no-nonsense challenge coming in from Paul Parrott. Is this piece already making a difference for Clarendon College? Yeah, nothing we're not used to. Aggressive tackling from Bolt Barrett. He is so decisive. Here is Jackson. Right footed effort is high and wide. But you can already see that he'll be a danger man. Yeah, had a goal in that Manning Cup semi final, the opening goal in that game. That is eighth of the season, Keanu Jackson. His coach Devon Anderson often talks about he just needs him to settle down and play because if he is in full flight, he's one of the best young players on the island. And you can often see glimpses of that talent. Hodges. Always looking for that long ball. Couldn't pick out Hall to Jean Relie. Oldest man on the park, 19 years old. Not counting the referee, of course. I was about to ask you if you're not counting yourself, but a ball coming over. I'm not on the park, am I? Good try, though. Here is Smith. Shot blocked by his opposite number, Malachi Douglas. He is so efficient, Malachi Douglas. His quality can often go unnoticed. Deshaun Henry also coming on. Leading scorer for Heidel this season. Already you're seeing a slight difference to the quality going forward for this Heidel unit. Thoughts on Devon Anderson? Leaving out two of his leading men from the starting lineup. Well, for in the case of Deshaun Henry, he had a bit of an injury problem in the Manning Cup semi-final. And in the case of Keanu Jackson, he has been in and out of the starting lineup, has been used as an impact player throughout the season and has had an impact whenever he's on the park. He scored a goal in their Champions Cup quarter-final win over Garvey Maceo as well, Jackson. Well, that's a lovely ball from Douglas. Had to be read well. Hull picks up the slack. Atiba Green. Douglas for Green. Forces the save at Tajara Lee's near post. Wasn't a lot of power behind it. Henry, Deshaun Henry, his cross is cut out by Barrett. QP. Hodges. Carnan College easing into another attack. Here's the captain, Malachi Douglas. Quickly releases it, was looking for Christopher Hall. Heidel who will win possession though. Here is Omaria Henry. Gets it inside for Smith. Smith's delivery is right at goalkeeper Roche Borel. Needed a better delivery than that. Yeah, I was wondering why he didn't play it along the ground. Any ball in the air from 
that angle I think is going to give the goalkeeper an advantage, especially when you're trying to whip it across the frame like that. But more promising signs from this Heidel attack in the second half. Definitely. Well, you don't suspect that they will get that much freedom in the Clarendon College penalty box going forward. And you want to produce something even more than that. <laughs> Douglas steps another one forward. Joe McGordon cleans up at the back for Heidel. Seaborn trying to get it further clear. Hodges in the mix, showing off his ball handling skills. Ashley was trying to venture further forward, but Seaborn won that battle. Working overtime, the Heidel number 13. Fifty fourth minute of this contest. Clarendon College still leading by a goal to nil. Kahim Dixon's goal the difference. First semi final of the Champions Cup. Both teams in with a shot of winning the Triple Crown because they're already into their domestic finals, the Manning and the Costa Cup competitions. But they need this one if they are to remain in contention for the Triple Crown at the end of this contest. Heidel behind trying to find a way to break through here is Amaria Henry delivers a really good ball inside headed on for Jackson and Jackson's left-footed shot is well blocked Devontae Hodges has possession now for Clarendon College was looking for Daniel Clark yeah probably asked a bit too much of him there not probably definitely did Dixon does well. Dixon trying to slip this one through. That's good defending. Still has possession. Kahim Dixon needs help. Gets it in the form of Atiba Green. Two inside the box waiting. But patient. CC will take over with Dion QP. Again, swings it out wide for Green. Green doesn't see the type of movement he wants up front. And they restart the attack. Here's Malachi Douglas now, dribbling forward, gets inside the box, can't shoot, goes on the cross. Dixon with the header, and it's wide of the mark. He almost looks stunned that that one did not cannon into the back of the net. Yeah, that cross was fired across at him. He tried to steer it into that far corner. Tajari Lee was wrong-footed. Had that been on target, it definitely would have been a goal. But thankfully for Lee and thankfully for Heidel, the scoreline still remains 1-0 to Clarendon College. He's had all the chances today, Kahim Dixon. He's taken just one. But with his quality, you keep giving him the opportunities and surely he will take another. Karen and College will feel that they should be two or three up by now. 56th minute. Free kick coming for Heidel. Doesn't get by the one-man wall, if you may. Now, Karen and College looking to escape. Daniel Clark was dispossessed. Throw coming up for Heidel with Gabriel Seaborn. Foul against Heidel caused by called by Terrell. Clarendon College back in possession. Tajari Lee needing some assistance and by assistance I mean 
he's giving some assistance to his coaching staff so they can get some tactical instructions across this Heidel unit. Left hamstring being worked on for Tajari Lee. In his second season of playing at this level of schoolboy football, the 19-year-old, his final season as well, has done well for his new school, Heidel, but there is nothing he could have done about the goal that is making the difference. Atiba Green with the cross, Gallimore failing to convert, coming off the crossbar, the attempted clearance coming back out to Christopher Hull, Hull laying it off to Dixon, and Dixon finishing beautifully for 1-0. Yeah, it was a really good finish, putting it back where it came from, finishing 101. Wrong foot in the goalkeeper. And I think Shamari Nicholson has to pattern that celebration, how much it's being used since his exploits in the Nations League. Kaim Dixon, the latest user, and here comes Christopher Hull. Swings that one forward with the left foot. Here is Gallimore. Bang into Michael Forbes. Park goes long looking for Henry. Guess who was at the top of the area? Burrell. And I think maybe even Bolt Bart had that one covered also. His speed across the ground is quite remarkable. I know that he has played fullback a lot in his younger years. But he is so quick. A ball given away to Jackson. Jackson for Henry. Henry's right footed shot blocked by that man again, Paul Barrett. And it was from a similar angle where Henry scored that goal in the Manning Cup semi final. One of our goals of the week. Excellent block by Bolt Barrett. He has been supreme so far in this encounter. An encounter which has two really good centre-backs, I think, on either side. And he has stood out a cut above the rest. Yeah, and Sean Paul Barrett having another stellar game for Clarendon College. Here is Dixon. Hygel winning position. Another love the ball up wide for Kylan Smith. High cross inside the box. The shot is blocked. There's another one coming in, and that wasn't far over the top. Heidel really forcing the issue in this second half. Omaria Henry looking for the equalizer. Yeah, we know that he has those capabilities, and that one I think is about as close as he has come. In this encounter so far, just an inch or so over the crossbar. He's coming closer and closer to getting his ninth of the season. Dante Stewart still with the best opportunity of the contest so far for Heidel. Forcing a left hand save from Brashe Borrell from pretty much point blank range. That was even before Clarendon College had found the opening goal. The QP. And that's an example of why I call him the best tempo setter in schoolboy football. Knows when to speed it up, knows when to slow it down as well. Always available for a pass. Another exceptional player on this Clarendon College team. Christopher Hall for Malachi Douglas. Your thoughts on Christopher Hall, final stages of the various competitions. Yeah, I think Christopher Hall has had a good season. His most productive goals and assists-wise of his schoolboy football career. Now, a lot of people had him as the star of this team, especially seeing the exit of Reed from last season. I'm not quite sure he's taken up that mantle, but he's been yet a, another cog, an effective cog in this well-oiled Clarendon machine. And so far, his contribution... That assist to Kaheem Dixon, his 13th of the season, 25th goal contribution of the season, has Clarendon College in front 
with one foot into the Champions Cup final. But only one. They still have a lot of work to do. It was very much in that player of the season conversation last year for the Da Costa Cup, Christopher Hall. Here he is venturing forward once more as a number of players around him still manages to pick out Dixon. Dixon skips over a challenge and finds Ashley out wide. Clarendon College still attacking. Jackman Ashley inside the box. That's a real letdown because he had done brilliantly up to the point of delivering the cross. Yeah, and that's the frustration with Ashley this season. Obviously a very skillful player. I think when it comes down to his final action, his final pass or shot can be disappointing at times. Mario Henry showing real speed to get around Hodges. Goes down and Hodges wins the battle for Curran and College. And Mario Henry stays on the floor, which is not a good look for Heidel. When he sprinted just now to Jay Williams, he looked like a man who attended Calabar. <laughs> I saw him last season in the Jamaica Premier League and in the Link Cup as well. And when I saw him sprinting away from these grown men, I knew that his pace was very serious. So I, I get your point, Ricardo. Good work by Joe McGoran there, but has given it away. Amari Henry back up on his feet now. Cupid goes left side. Clarendon College on the front foot once again. Here is Daniel Clark. For QP to Dixon. Dixon will get it back. That shot peeling away. Miles wide of the target. 64th minute of the encounter. Clarendon College still leading by a goal to nil at the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex. And it's clear that they want to increase that lead. So is the client and way never going to settle with one goal. Download the Sportsman app from the Google Play or the App Store and witness the closing stages of the schoolboy football season in Jamaica. Champions Cup semi-finals on today. Kingston College and Glenmuir to come in the second semi-final. The Walker Cup and Ben Francis Cup knockout semi-finals to come this week as well with the Champions Cup final to close the show on Saturday. And then the Manning and the Costa Cup finals and the Olivier Shield all in December. Can go over to January if you want to think about the old Manning and all the Costa affair. Lenworth Hyde knows he's in charge, but knows it's far from over as well. Here is Hytel with Henry. This should be 1-1. Henry gets around the goalkeeper, gets to an acute angle, inside and fires over the top well that's the best Heidel chance of the match and Amaria Henry is wondering how he did not convert and so are they he did excellently I think for the first time we've seen him outpace Nashan Bolt Barrett did it really well to get around the goalkeeper as well Burrell but just overran it a bit and I think he needed a bit more composure here Look for a teammate. The angle was so acute. On his weaker foot, he tried to get that ball into the upper 90 on the other side. And oh my, he should have done better there. That's a golden opportunity for Heidel to level this one. That is the type of opportunity you want to take in a massive encounter like this. He'll be back for sure though. Heidel. That's a good ball whipped in. Forbes can't get the shot away. In any case, whistle against Heidel. Curran and College still with a 1-0 advantage. I still believe the best of this match is yet to come.
The crowd support has built significantly since the start of this encounter. As Smith picks it up for Hytel and Paul Parrott is in the way again for Clarendon College. He's just having another stellar game. Here is the cross, which turned out to be a shot from Darren Campbell. And it's pushed over by Burrell and a corner kick coming up for Heidel. What seemed like an innocuous shot initially turned out to be quite a challenge for the Clarendon College custodian. Yeah, he was watching the flight. Heidel have taken the corner short. Forbes hits it on. And it's comfortable for Burrell this time. Karen and College have to be careful, Lejay. They have the lead. But it's a fickle one. It's just 1 0. Yeah, and we saw this in the Da Costa Cup semi final where they had the lead for such a long period of time, taking the lead towards the end of the first half. Then conceded that goal late on and then started conceding more chances. 1 0 is never a safe lead. And I'm sure they know that as seasoned campaigners, hence why they're on the attack for more. Heidel very much still in the game. Here's the on QP. Back to Hodges. Daniel Clark lays it forward for Ashley. This one falls for Hall. On his favorite left foot. Couldn't keep it down. Yeah, leaning back a bit as, the, as he was striking the ball, Christopher Hall. Always going to go over. Another half chance burned by Clarendon. Here is Amaria Henry with his sprinting boots on again. Devontae Hodges has him covered. Henry did well enough to win the corner kick though. And another opportunity for Heidel to stay aggressive. Four corner kicks now for Heidel, three for Clarendon College. Heidel pressing for the equalizer. Won't get it there. Hall for Gallimore, for Clark. QP. Clarendon College in possession. Switches over onto the right for a Tebow Green. Here is Kahim Dixon. Settling into their favored rhythm now, Clarendon College. Using the full width of this Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex field. This one slipped inside looking for the captain, Malachi Douglas. Douglas does well to win it. Hull trying to escape one, but couldn't get away from Seaborn who has been pretty solid today for this Heidel team. And in the 70th minute, Tyron and Collins still with a 1-0 advantage. Yeah, and he's had to be. He has had some of the biggest defensive troubles so far in this game for Heidel. And he stood up firm to a lot of them. Ashley. Caught away from Jackson, but couldn't get away from Brightly. Here is Jackson now. Oh, his pass picks out Dixon. And Dixon felt ambitious to go for the right-footed effort from distance. Won't add to his five Champions Cup goals. I'm not quite sure the exact statistics on it, but I'm sure those five goals isn't far off from being the all-time Champions Cup leading goal scorer. I think Dijon Richards got six in his sole season so there's there's that to get over but apart from that i can't think of anyone else who would have scored that many yeah the thing about kahim dixon is that his goals have come at really impactful moments in big games oh that's superb from kahim dixon gets the cross inside Douglas couldn't get it on the control to fire a shot Ball back inside and cleared away again. In the title winning season, Lijay, 
the first game against John Smith, which was a quarter-final round game. Kahim Dixon won the penalty that resulted in the winner. A 2-1 victory for them in a tightly contested match. Then he scored and assisted in the semi-final as Heidel come forward again. The left-footed shot is over the top. The captain, Ronaldo Barrett. That's a big chance, you know. He was faced with a, a decision to make. In that instance, he was either going to slip in Mario Henry or take the shot on himself. It opened up for him to take the shot. And on his favored left foot, I think he should do a little bit better there. At the very least, test Borrell in that goal. Yeah, very much the case. And uh, Jamin Ashley John holding on to his left hamstring. Thurman and College have options on the bench. Just to complete the point, Lejay, in terms of his Champions Cup career, Kahim Dixon won the penalty that got them the quarterfinal victory against Charlie Smith in the 2021-22 campaign. Then he scored and assisted in the semi-final. Then he scored the lone goal in the final. That was against Dintel Technical. And then, of course, last season, he had that wonderful goal in the semi-final against Kingston College and he has scored two goals this campaign. So he's had a big impact in different matches as Ashley is substituted and today in Williams who scored CC's third goal in the 3-1 victory over St. George's College in the quarter-final round of this season's competition makes his way onto the park. I mean, homecoming for today in Williams as well is from this area, not far away, trench down. Like Kahim Dixon, so a few Clarendon College players from this part of town It's clear then why a few of them look so comfortable here at the Anthony Spalding Sports Complex. But then again, Clarendon College look pretty comfortable in almost every stadium in Jamaica. Unless it's raining, right? You make a fair point. Campbell. Coming under pressure from QP. Foul called against QP. to sixth minute of this semi-final still just one goal in it Heidel have had enough opportunities for you to think that this game is far from over here they come again Henry trying to create room to shoot and eventually run himself out of options or quality options and then gave the ball away Hall for Dixon. Douglas has possession. Dixon cuts it inside back to Douglas. Heidel back in numbers, but Dixon has possession and the chance to cross. It's across the face of goal, and today Williams picks it up at the other end. Chips one inside. Well read by Douglas. 
Oh, that's not a bad left-footed shot. That goes just wide off the left upright. For a second when it left the boot, you had the sense of something special. But it wasn't special enough. Yeah, good technique, actually. And Tajay Lee was interested. Well, yeah, it just wasn't close enough to really trouble him. They'll desperately want that insurance goal, Clarendon College. They will not want a repeat of the Acosta Cup semi-final on Saturday against Garvey Maceo, where, as the J pointed out, they led for a long time before having to go to penalties following a one all draw. Here is Daniel Clark for QP. Hodges was begging for it, but it's Atiba Green who is in space on the right. Slips one forward to Hall who is under pressure and loses possession. Heidel on their way. Here is Henry of the Amaria variety. Now Sean Bolt Barrett wins another battle and Jackson takes him down and he wins a free kick. I'm not going to lie, I'm appreciating this performance as the minutes goes on. Not only for the quality that we're seeing, but also for the fact that he's making our man of the match decision extremely easy, Ricardo. Yeah, in my opinion, he should have gotten it in the quarterfinals. <laughs> that game against St. George's College was given to Kahim Dixon. Who, mind you, had a very good game as well, so... But today, I don't think there can be any doubt unless there's a dramatic shift in what is happening so far in this encounter. Here is Smith for Heidel. Jackson won it. Picks out Kynan Smith again. Here is Kiana Jackson. Wherever half an opportunity presents itself, he wants to go for a shot. Daniel Clark allows that one to run behind for a Clarendon College goal kick. Yeah, he was trying to find Deshaun Henry there, who I don't think has had too big an impact since coming on for Heidel, their leading goal scorer. Jay Williams has confidently predicted that Clarendon College will win the Triple Crown. They are on course. Today, Williams gets around. Michael Forbes picks up Dixon, left it for Hall. Hall was trying to curl it into the four post. Hi. Did have some curl on it though. He looks a frustrated figure. Yeah, because he knows he can do better with that left foot of his. He knows this is his bread and, bread and butter. Right technique. Execution just failing him a bit. He's told them to enjoy the game. I think they've enjoyed it today. But the job is far from done. At points, it seemed as if they are putting on an exhibition, but they need the insurance goal. Dixon lifts it inside for Williams. Gets a very good save out of Tajari Lee once again. Douglas with the shot. Tejan really equal to the task. Forbes. Jackson. 
the attack breaks down for Heidel. He'll get another chance to rebuild, though. The diagonal looking for Smith. Didn't get to him. Gets another opportunity here. Lifts it on for Darren Campbell. Paul Barrett again. And you know, the thing is, at this point, I think once the Heidel players see him coming, a little bit of fear sets in, similar to what we see with certain defenders in the European game when, you, when certain attackers see Van Dijk approaching or see William Saliba approaching. It's a certain fear that they have. I saw Bolt Barrett steaming in there, and immediately I saw Darren Campbell think twice about getting that cross in. Good time to tell you to download the Sportsmax app from the Google Play or the App Store. You can watch European football and your home of champions. You can also watch schoolboy football. Heidel looking for the equalizer still. Barrett. Still Heidel with Henry! That was a screamer, but it was a high one. Yeah, he got his space. He got his time to let fly. We know he can let fly. He certainly caught it well. Roche Barrel was scrambling. And get another one for Mario Henry. Just a little bit over. One of those afternoons where it just hasn't fallen for Heidel. Hasn't fallen for Klein and College in the way they would have wanted either. Flag is up. A yellow card comes out. It's all happening in the closing stages of this semi final. Yeah, Bolt Barrett there steaming in, and for the first time, I think, in this game, he's mistimed one. And yeah, deserved yellow card on that occasion. You now, Heidel have a couple of players who I think would be interested in this one. I immediately saw Keanu Jackson go over his left foot. Seems as if he's favorite. Terran Campbell there as well. Keanu Jackson. Seems most interested. Three man wall in place for Clarendon College. Jackson steps up. Jackson fires high. Yeah, it was always going to be an ambitious effort, and it was. But not the execution needed from Jackson. And Heidel, five minutes plus stoppage time now to eke out an equalizer. 86th minute of the semi final. Clarendon College still with the advantage. Kahim Dixon's 16th minute goal, still the difference. Here is Smith. For Deshaun Henry. Here's Henry again. Again, the attack breaks down. And the Clarendon College can come away with it with Christopher Hall. Hall has some space in front of him. Decides to cut inside and then pick out Kahim Dixon! His love affair with the Champions Cup soars on! That is another goal of pivotal importance! And Clarendon College are waving their way into another Champions Kahim Dixon on the double. CC almost there. We heard them give Kahim Dixon a nickname at halftime. I think I should change his nickname to Clock because he is always right at least two times a game. 
Kaim Dixon has fired Clarendon College into the Champions Cup final yet again. And he has been absolutely superb in this competition, in the Dacosta Cup, and for Clarendon College, he has been their superman. He has been inevitable. And Clarendon College have surely won this one. I've said it before, I'll say it again. He is the most underrated player in all of schoolboy football. His 27th goal of the season, his third in the Champions Cup. And that looks like a man who has resigned himself to the fact that they've, they'll lose out on the Triple Crown. It's Clarendon College who are maintaining hopes of winning the coveted three, the Champions Cup, the Costa Cup in their situation and ultimately the Olivia Shield. Dixon now soars to six goals in his Champions Cup career. Andrew Allen comes on for Heidel. Last throw of the dice by Devon Anderson and Heidel. They need a big six. Clarendon College heading forward. There will be a penalty appeal. It's going to be a free kick. And when you consider the Jay Williams that in truth and in fact, Kahim Dixon has scored 34 goals this season. Seven of those were wiped away because Kellitz were suspended, well banned from the competition. Justin Hales, who scored the opener in the quarterfinal against St. George's College, is on the park as well, the number 22. And when you consider the exploits of one Dujan Whisper Richards last season, if you were to include those goals against Kellitz, he would have matched the goal and assist output of Richards last season. So this season from Kaim Dixon has been extraordinary and it isn't finished yet. Free kick coming up for Clarendon College. We are in the 90th minute of this semi-final. Three around the six-yard box waiting for this delivery. Dixon and Douglas at the edge of the 18. To goal. Oh, that was a pretty good save. Devontae Hodges with the final shot. We've hit 90 minutes. We are into time added on. Corner kick for Heidel. Five minutes minimum to play. Javonna Daly has also come on for Heidel, replacing Darren Campbell. Clarendon College heading towards a rear clean sheet in the latter stages of the various competitions, the J. Here's Atiba Green. Yeah, you say rear clean sheet as of late. But in this, their 19th game of schoolboy football this season, they have only conceded six goals to go along with 79 scored. They really have been brilliant. And I think that they are deserving, deserving qualifier into the Champions Cup final. They will play their 
fourth Da Costa Cup final in the last five seasons. They are heading for their second Champions Cup final in the last three. Michael Forbes bounces Douglas over. And Douglas thinks that he should have gotten something more for that. Hops away does Malachi Douglas. Was holding on to that right knee earlier in the contest. Was a moment of concern for Karen and College. And that is something they will have to monitor even at the end of this contest. Here is Smith for Heidel for Giovanna Bailey. Could Heidel have been better today? Definitely. Yeah, but I think a lot of what they have tried to do has just been nullified by this Clarendon team. Yeah, Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. Christopher Hall to Green. To Hall, Kajim Dixon with the finish. The first goal of the contest. The first of two for Kajim Dixon. Checking his all time Champions Cup tally to six. This season's tally now up to 27. Sportsmax app moment brought to you by the Sportsmax app. 94th minute of the send count. A free kick coming up for Heidel. Clarendon College 2 0 up. The delivery is not a bad one. And it's Paul Barrett who gets the header away. It's bicycled back in by the substitute Andrew Allen. But it's right at Burrell. Clarendon's football is a buzz. Again at the high school level. 21 shots. For Clarendon College in this encounter, nine of them on target, ten shots for Heidel, four of them on target. Now they'll look to see this one out, mere seconds away from the final whistle. Paul Barrett showing good ball handling skills. Has to be careful though. Here is Andrew Allen. 88th minute substitute with the 95th minute free kick. Even the CC fans are enjoying it. Diminutive, but I'm sure he has a big heart. Will need it if he gets a chance in the Manning Cup final because there doesn't seem a way back in this Champions Cup semi final. Ball inside. And Amoria Henry didn't get enough of a touch onto it, if any at all. And that will be that. Kernan College back in the Champions Cup final. Beaten by Dijon Richards at Kingston College a year ago. This time around, there is no denying that man. Kahim Dixon with a double. Heidel with no answer. And Clarendon College remain on course for the Triple Crown. Tashara Lee, the transfer from Kingston College, still with a shot at Manning Cup glory. And by extension, Olivia Shield, success. But the Triple Crown now can only be achieved by two schools, Clarendon College, one of them, and they are further than the other with this 2-0 victory over Heidel in semi-final one of the Champions Cups. Let's have a look at the match highlights then. Carmen College with Jamel Ashley's beautiful pass. Kahim Dixon with a lovely run, but unable to get on the end of it as the genre Lee. DeAndre Gallimore with a free kick. Right at goal, came off the crossbar after a slight touch from Lee, who was good in goal. Very good in goal for Hytel today.
best chance of the first half. What a delightful ball inside from Ronaldo Bryant, the Heidel captain. But Dante Stewart could not beat Roche Borrell. A strong left arm denying him. Then in the 19th minute, Carmen College would get the opening goal. Atiba Green inside for Gallimore. His shot off the crossbar. Back out to Christopher Hall. Hall to Kahim Dixon. Dixon with a love to finish. Enjoy this one. Carnan College at their beautiful best. Was an opportunity to clear for Hytel. Clearance wasn't decisive enough and they paid the price. Dixon at that point with his fifth goal in his Champions Cup career. That was another opportunity with a lovely delivery coming from Daniel Clark. Chapman Ashley turned that one to goal. It was blocked. Clark tried his luck from distance, but once again, Tajari Lee was equal to the task, the 19-year-old. Hull for Atiba Green. Green inside to Malachi Douglas. But Atiba Green couldn't beat Lee at his near post. Wasn't enough power in the shot, really. Douglas inside the box. Picking out Kahim Dixon, his header wide of the mark. He had wrong-footed Lee, but couldn't hit the target. Heidel had their opportunities in the second half. Amaria Henry with a shot from outside the 18. That one over the top. Henry showing speed here. Getting around Barrett. Getting around Burrell. Then from an acute angle, spanked it over the top. Yes, he would have been disappointed with the final effort. Had options to cross as well. That looked like an innocuous pass initially from Darren Campbell. Turned out to be some trouble for Burrell who handed it in goal. And then here is Hall cutting inside, making the pass to Kahim Dixon. And Dixon firing home with the right foot. 87th minute closer for the Clarendon College number 13. A double for him. His third goal in the Champions Cup this season. His 27th goal in all of schoolboy football. And Clarendon College into the Champions Cup final with a 2-0 victory over Hydell at the Anthony Spaulding Sports Complex. Let's have a look at the match statistics then. 21 shots of Clarendon College, 9 on target, 10 for Hydell, 4 on target, 13 falls in the encounter, 7 of them called against Clarendon College. One yellow card that was given to Hydell's Deron Campbell. Four corner kicks for Heidel, three for Clarendon College, seven saves made by Tishari Lee in the Heidel goal, four by Roche Burrell, the Clarendon College custodian. Heidel had a much better second half in terms of possession, but ultimately Clarendon College busted overall 60% to 40. The stat that matters most though, Clarendon College winning this encounter by two goals to nil. Yeah. Kimania Sullivan is with the player of the match this week. No doubt about it. All right, thank you, Ricardo. I'm joined by man of the match for today's game, Digicel man of the match, Kahim Dixon of Clarendon College. He'll receive his goodies from junior brand manager of Digicel, Kadeen Welby. Kahim, Cristiano Ronaldo is known as Mr. Champions League. Are you Mr. Champions Cup? Because yes, I, you... yes, I am Mr. Champions League. Yeah, and in terms of your performance, those two goals were brilliantly taken. Speak to me what was going through your mind in the box when you got them. What was going through my mind that I have to put two goals away from my cousin that passed away. So, you know, yeah. And in terms of the game, how much fun were you having out there on this pitch? 100% fun. Just enjoying the game. That's all the coach said. And in terms of the Triple Crown, you guys are still alive for it. Do you think you have what it takes to get three titles? Yes, we have what it takes, but we're going to take it one game at a time. All right, thank you, Kaim. All the best. You're welcome. All right, goal scoring hitman, Mr. Champions Cup, Kaim Dixon of Clarendon College. I'm joined now by Coach Devon Anderson. Coach, you seem to be giving your players a team talk after the game. Are you pleased with that performance? 
Yeah, I was asking you if you were pleased with that performance today in that Champions Cup semis. I mean, it was a game that the team that made the least mistake would came out the winner. You know, we make two critical mistakes in front of goal. And, you know, we pay. You know, credit to Clarendon. It was a hard fought battle. We threw some punch. One and two call could have gone on our way. But nevertheless, you know, it was a good game. We lick our wound and we go back and get ready for the Manning Cup. Yeah, you noticeably left out a couple of your players. Was that to focus on the Manning Cup or was that some tactical tweet? No, we had a, we had a few niggling injuries from the last game, you know. So I have to strategize. All right, thank you, Coach. All the best Respect. in the Manning Cup. All right, that was Coach Devon Anderson of Heidel. Still has the Manning Cup to contend for. And now we'll see his opposite number coach, Lenworth Teacher Hyde. Coach, you asked the boys to go out there and have fun. Is that how you saw it today? Yeah, man, definitely. Especially the first half. I think we had an excellent first half. I didn't like the second half more. They, they brought back Idel in the game, and I know it's a team that can play. But when Idel had, had their moments, I, I thought we defended well. Our goalkeeper came up big today also. But it was a nice performance. I, did, I, I wanted more, but what they give me at this stage of the competition, I'll take it. And in terms of Kaim Dixon, coach, I want to just ask you about him. Have you ever coached a player like this, so lethal and, and deadly? Yeah, he reminds me of Fabian Taylor. From Harborview, you know that striker, same way. Same work ethics, always scoring, work hard, right through the day, never miss a training. So, I've seen him. Yeah, I have an analyst who believes that the Triple Crown is yours this year. Yeah? Do you believe him? No, man, we are going to work, you know, the next match, when the next match come, we deal with that. I don't talk about Triple Crown, I just play in the game them as them come along. All right, thank you, coach. All yeah, the best. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you have it. Semi-final one from the Anthony Sporting Sports Complex. Clarendon College beating Hytel by two goals to nil. Semi-final two to come. Glenmuir, Kingston College. Yo, Issa. High school boy football look this season. People them ready, you know. All right, then. Pico. Manning Cup, only for your shield, you make winning cup. We watch the champions cup, Ben Francis, what a cup, which team are win the championship this season. Yo, it's a one day for school, I got finish the league and meet now. Which you that got collect the golden boat and be the favorite for the people. Yo, it's a busy fans are roll out all boat, be a flag for vehicle. Looking at the crowd, but learn a support us from school and community too. People, nothing at the stand, some are listening to prayer, they must have a watch it on TV too. Country and turn your night for one reason. It's a school boy football, good cup, look one, look all. Which team are the best and I got better than the best and if I get to beat your chest. It's a school boy football, that team could rise and that team could fall. But they never win the one till the whistle blows around, come enjoy the show. Yo, it's a that competition and never have a nice up. People love see when boy I get nice up on the field. From goal and score from far and them love with peaceful and the youths now war. Yo, it's a school boy football, no local. The youths are move on to international big league. And I still people hard but member wish party start. It's a school boy football. Run come, 